for me and the baby, and like it is hard to, to cope on that leg. And how far will that go? What will that bite? Right, again. Me and the baby, some new clothes, um, the baby's milk, the baby's nappies, the rest of it goes like on me, like on, like on the Friday, like I'll go and spend it on alcohol or cannabis or something like that. So if you didn't spend it on those things, would you have more money to spend on your little girl? Mm -hmm. To buy her she more? She has everything she needs, so. Well, what if you were to save that other money that you're spending on drugs and stuff? How, how could that help you? It could, it could help me, like, but I can't save money. Like, I'd, say, I'd probably go and save like £300 and think, oh, I don't care, I'm going to go and um, spend it now. <laughs> I can't save money for a long time. It just kind of uh, shocked me that this is, if this is what the teenagers who are having babies spending their money on, um, certainly that I'm ready to be mothers. Uh, and, and I think we've seen in Hannah a lot of behaviors that uh, would portray that she's not ready to be a mother. She's a mom, but she's not a mother. The Pecks believe passionately that a strong work ethic is central to good character. Dad Spencer wants Hannah and Jane to discover the satisfaction that working can bring. He's volunteered them for a day of hard graft at a friend's ranch, where they'll have to get their hands dirty alongside owner Carol and local teens Erin and Cash. Erin, you're going to work with James and help. You guys will help just throw a bale. Hannah, you'll work with me and we'll throw them up. And they need to be. Load it on and stack it. Cash works at the ranch in exchange for using their stables. He mows 70 lawns a week to earn spending money. Good job. Well, I'm 15, and I've been working with my brothers and with my dad since I was 10, doing this and that. And, you know, I'm not saying every kid needs to start when they're really young, but I think every kid needs to learn, every teenager, especially your teenager, needs to learn you have to work to have fun. <laughs> Oh my God. Even before she got pregnant, Hannah was happy to live on state benefits. Oh my God, Last time I went to work, I was 15, so that was two and a half years ago nearly. If it gets too much for me, then I'm going to let them know that I'm not prepared to do no more. With 150 acres and 120 horses to take care of, the ranch doesn't run itself. That was only 10 bales. Normally you get a truckload of 150, 250 bales. You gotta take you gotta put them all on and you gotta take them all off when you get here. It takes a while. So what have you done before? I've done the experience in a salon life doing hair and nails and that. But then I ran away. Well, this is totally different than doing Very nails and hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it definitely is. They're like volunteering, helping that woman, and they're not even their kids. During a rare break, James is keen to show off about his usual recreational activities. On an average weekend, I'd go out and get drunk and like do drugs and that kind of stuff. And like go to parties or go out in town, just generally have a good time. Why do that? You can have all the fun you want without getting drunk. Do you go out or drink or smoke or do drugs or anything? Never. So what do you do? Like go parties? Um, yeah, yeah. some. Go to parties, like hang out with friends, watch, we watch movies. movies. So you would never drink? Never? No. No. Oh my god. I think it's good that they, they don't, they can have fun without having to drink or anything. I think because of their religion, I think it's a bit sad because they're still young and they shouldn't have to follow a religion so much and look into it in so much debt at such a young age, they should be going out and having fun and living their life while they're young. Nicolene has arranged for James to attend a local homeschool get-together. She wants him to experience positive peer pressure. Today's activities are all about confidence building and teamwork. Nicolene's sister, Janelle, is in charge. Everyone get a hold of your rope and then I'll give you the first clue. Ready? Yeah! Music, music. Here we go, here we go. Let's do this. Talk to your team. Guys, guys, okay. What is... Fucking stressing me out! I can't be bothered with it. James's feelings of failure at school quickly resurface. I'm not doing it anymore, simple as that. I can let them down, I'm not doing it. 
You can laugh at me all you want. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just trying to figure out that, that what's really making you frustrated. I can't be asked anyway. I'm walking. I can't be bothered. I can let it seem down. I don't care. I just want to talk to you for a minute. No, because you're not going to understand. There's no point in talking. Okay, well, how about this? When things get really hard at home, what do you do? I get stressed out. And then what happens? What do you do? I have a cigarette. Okay. Anything else? No. Do you give up? Yes. Where does it get you? I'm a failure. I'm, I give up on everything, so... You're I'm not, not a failure. You don't know me, so how can you say that or not? I don't know why I feel like I failed them times, because I failed school, I failed at college where I've just been to. My mum's never had faith in me about anything. I only always give up. I hate failing at things, because it just makes me feel shit about myself. I'm disappointed in myself. I want to apologise for how I spoke to you and how I behaved. I was really stressed out. I didn't feel very well. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Would you be willing to continue on with the race? Because your team said, we can't go on because James isn't here. Should we go get him? And so they, re like, they care about you. They want you to succeed. They want you to be a part of their success. When you overcome these hard challenges, you feel good about yourself, you know, because you know that you can, whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. Yeah. I'll come yeah? And join in. All right, let's go. Just right back here. This is your team right here. So work with them, talk to them, see what they're doing. They definitely need your help because they've been working on it. I want to give you a hug for coming back. Because it's hard, and I know it's hard to do stuff like this, but it is so courageous and brave to come back and face it yeah. and do more stuff. That's awesome. They need you. Go for it. Yeah. So what are you all doing? Somehow we're supposed to try to get everybody on this. It's ridiculous. People stand on the bottom so they stay in place. Janelle believes that success should always be rewarded. Everyone is given a bracelet to remind them of their achievement. What does this rope mean to you? To never give up and to keep on trying, no matter how stressful it is, to just keep on going. Good. That's awesome. I'm glad you learned that. Professor won that? That's great. The Pecks have arranged for Hannah to meet with ranch hand Cash for a lunchtime date. They want her to understand a different teenage perspective. You go and meet the boy in town, usually you take your mate with you on the first time, and then you just get a bevy and like just make some weed. And then like, if you're like you're single and that, then you go back to this house and probably have sex. Oh, I want to in Utah, the age of consent is 18. And like all Mormons, the Peck children will be expected to save sex for marriage. This is 16 is when you should date. You should be more learning about other people, what you like, what you don't like, you know, in a person. They say passionate kissing is the word. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't lie, lie on top of each other. And you should always date in groups. You're allowed to, like, touch each other than that before you're 16. You're not. I mean, before you get manies. No, you're not supposed to do any of that. You can hold hands, sit by each other. That, that's it. Talk, you know, and then have you're fun. You're to sleep in the same bed? No, definitely not. That's absolutely not allowed. Because, I mean, if you're sleeping in the same bed, you might as well be doing it, too. I mean, in our church and in our culture, a relationship is more about emotional support and more about getting to know people and what you like and what you don't like. And to get to know what you like and what you don't like, you don't need to be sleeping with people. Bye. Okay, have fun. Okay. See you. Bye. The most important thing in a relationship for me is it needs to make me laugh. It needs to be nice to me. It needs to cuddle me and tell me it loves me and that. It needs to be nice looking and it needs to be good in bed.